So behind these needlessly complicated titles hides a very simple question. Can we make simple zero knowledge for lattices? So first, some definitions. Uh, what are integer vector one-way functions? So uh, an integer vector one-way function will be a function going from z to some power r to into uh, an uh, abelian group, such that it is uh, homomorphically, uh, additively homomorphic. And it is r to inverse for small vectors, where small means with norm bounded by some constant. Why do we care about uh, integer vector one-way functions? Because, um, because they are used in basically all lattice-based uh, constructions, such that encryption, hash functions, commitment, and so on and so forth. Now, what is zero knowledge? Well, very simple. Very simple. A prover wants to convince a verifier that he knows a pre-image x for some image y. We have uh, the usual properties. Correctness states that the protocol should finish if everyone is honest. Zero knowledge states that uh, no leakage of information should occur except for the truth of uh, this statement. And uh, soundness say, says that uh, no cheating prover should be able to convince a verifier. Somewhat more formal is uh, to say that uh, soundness states that uh, any deterministic prover that succeeds with a probability p, from him one can extract a pre-image of y in expected time 1 over p, or linear in 1 over p. Now, let's give a very simple exam example of zero knowledge. So we have a prover who, who knows uh, a vector x and its ima image y, and a verifier who knows only y. The prover will start by sampling a small randomness r and computing its image a, send a to the verifier, who sends back a challenge in 0, 1. And finally, the prover computes z, which is either x plus r if c equals 1, or just r if uh, c equals 0. Sends z back to uh, the verifier, who checks both that f of z equals c times y plus a, which will be true given the homomorphic properties of uh, f if everything has been done correctly, and that z is small. So that's simple. Is that good enough? Well, no, not at all. First, because that's not zero knowledge. Here, z depends on x, because uh, clearly when c equals 1, it's x plus r. This leaks information about x. Uh, there is a solution for this, which is called rejection sampling. So. Essentially, rejection sampling states that the prover will only proceed to the third step if z does not leak anything about uh, x. So there is a probability that the prover will restart the whole protocol. Uh, in this talk, we will completely ignore rejection sampling because it's not, uh, we, can, we will just assume that uh, rejection sampling is uh, accepted with probability one. It's not very important for the rest of our talk. Now, another problem is that this is not really sound either, because the prover can just guess the challenge, since the challenge is in 0, 1, and uh, cheat if his guess is right. So to achieve uh, k bits of soundness, this protocol will have to be repeated k, k times. That's not really good. So as I have said, this is very inefficient. Having to do uh, 100 or more repetitions of this protocol gives rather large, large proofs of knowledge and uh, huge computations. So maybe we can do something better if instead of trying to prove knowledge of one secret, we try to prove knowledge of many secrets at once. So um, now the new context is that the prover wants to prove knowledge of uh, pre-image of y1 up to yn. So have we, as we have seen, we can do this with this simple proof, which in which we will have an overhead linear in the security parameter. Uh, slack, what we call slack, is uh, the difference between the size of z and the size of x. So uh, since we see that z is x plus r, x, z will have to be larger than uh, x, and the slack dis dictates the parameter of the schemes that uh, we will use uh, those vectors on. So here, the slack is constant, at least in the parameter k, 
which, with, uh, which is what we are interested uh, in. And amortization for the simple proof is basically one, since we only need one equation. A work by um, Kramer et al. at Eurocrypt this year uh, made a huge progress in this direction in which uh, for amortized zero knowledge, they achieve constant zero knowledge, and the constant is a small one, and they achieve linear slack, which is totally okay considering the size of the vector we use. On the other end, they, ne they need four k squared uh, equations to, for this amortization to kick in, which is to say that for k uh, 128 bits of security, we will need nearly 70,000 equations to be able to prove zero knowledge. Our work uh, is to reduce this amortization. So what we achieve is uh, overhead linear in some uh, logarithmic in some parameter alpha, but here the constants are very small, so this basically does not matter at all. We divide the slack by log alpha, which is in itself nice, but just a side effect. But most importantly, we get amortization over four times k divided by log alpha square equations which can reduce uh, the number of equations quite a lot. So how does, first, how does uh, Kramer et al, how did Kramer et al uh, do the, this uh, zero knowledge? It's a very clever construction that uses two building blocks. The first one is an imperfect amortized proof, which is to say that um, an amortized proof would uh, normally, uh, soundness would normally ensure that any prover who, who succeeds with probability 2 to the minus k, uh, I should be able to extract all pre-images from this prover. But for imperfect amortized uh, proofs, from any prover that succeeds with probability 2 to the minus k, I can extract all but k pre-images, which is not enough for soundness, clearly. But they use uh, the homomorphic properties of the function f and a, very, and a clever construction of a bipartite graph to show that there exists a compiler that can turn every imperfect amortized proof for n greater than 4k squared into a full zero knowledge proof of knowledge. And this comes at very small costs since uh, this introduces uh, a multiplicative over overhead of two and uh, only uh, linear slack. We will not touch the, the compiler in this uh, paper. We will focus on the amortized proof. So we will work to reduce this uh, number of things we can extract to k divided by log alpha for some parameter alpha. And naturally, just doing this means that when using the compiler, we will now only need, we will, need, we will divide this k by log alpha again and uh, only need n greater than 4k squared divided by log square alpha. And same thing for the slack, we will divide the slack by log alpha. So let's see how they do the amortized proof first. So once again, we have the same setting. The prover knows n, sec n secrets and their images, and the verifier only knows the images. First, the prover will sample small randomnesses, compute their images, and send the images to the verifier. The verifier will sample 0, 1 challenge again, send the challenges, and the prover will reveal all the randomnesses where the challenge, the corresponding challenge was a 0. So basically, the prover will reveal half of his randomnesses. What's really important here is that, contra contrary to what uh, intuition we could have, we don't use n randomnesses in this first step. We have n secrets, but we use three n randomnesses, simply because since we reveal each of them with probability one half, after this first step, we will have overwhelming probability that at least n randomnesses have not been revealed, if n is large enough. So we can do this first step, and then in the second step, we will use n uh, randomnesses that have not been revealed and compute zi equals xi plus rj, where these rj are the first n that have not been revealed. We can then send the zi's to the verifier, which exactly like before, will verify that f of zi equals yi plus, plus aj, and that zi is small. 
So this is the imperfect proof. Why is it? Why does it have the soundness that I gave? Because the probability of revealing each randomness, or i, will be one half. Now, imagine the prover wants to cheat on k of these uh, secrets. How does he do it? He will cheat on k of the randomnesses, hope the verifier does not ask to reveal them, and then use these randomnesses to cheat on the dead eyes. So, in essentially, to cheat on k prey images, he will have to cheat on k randomnesses, and the probability that none of these randomnesses will be revealed is 2 to the minus k. More formally, we can show that from a prover who succeeds with probability 2 to the minus k, one can extract all but k pre images. Now, how to improve this? Well, the solution is very simple. We just increase the probability of revealing each randomness. So clearly, if each randomness is revealed with probability 1 minus 1 over alpha, with alpha greater than 2, then to have none of the k uh, secrets revealed, the, cheat the cheating prover will uh, have a probability 1 over alpha to the k. And once again, more formally, we can show that from a prover who succeeds with probability 2 to the minus k, one can extract all but k over, lag over alpha, log alpha pre-images. So we will do exactly, exactly this on this uh, protocol. So instead of taking c from 0, 1 to the 3n, we take c to be a Bernoulli, Bernoulli vari variable with parameter 1 over alpha which is a fancy way of saying we reveal every th each uh, randomness with probability one, over, uh, 1 minus 1 over alpha. So this introduces an issue, because for the next step, we need n randomnesses to not have been revealed. And clearly, if we reveal too many of them, this will not work anymore. So we have to increase the number of randomnesses we take in the beginning, and thus increase the number of uh, images we send. So now we have each achieved the soundness where, that we asked, asked to get, which is k divided by log alpha. But we have introduced an overhead linear in alpha. So this protocol as it stands is completely useless. It's not more efficient than the previous one in any way. So we will patch things up. First, we can compute a hash of all these images, a1 to uh, a3 alpha n. And instead of sending this, send the hash. Of course, now these checks do not make any sense because the verifier does not have AI or AJ. But we can replace them by one check in which the verifier will compute AI himself. So for everything that was revealed, he can compute F of RI, which will be AI. And for all those that were used in the, this equation, you can compute f of zi minus yi, which should be aj for the remaining j. So we can compute these, reorder them in the right order, and check that the hash is the right one. If the hash is collision resistant, then we keep the soundness of the protocol. And this uh, works fine. So now, how we done yet? Well, no, the soundness is the the overhead is still linear in alpha because in the third step, we reveal most of the randomnesses. We will, uh, on average, reveal three times alpha minus one times n randomnesses, which is clearly linear in alpha and clearly much too large. So we need a more efficient way to reveal the randomnesses to the, re to the verifier. So the prover will first, first we, he will extract each randomness from a seed, simply by using a PRG. And uh, to do so, he will structure the seeds as a tree. This way, instead of using all the seeds, he will only need to reveal a few nodes. So what will the prover do? First, he will sample one seed, uniformly at random on, with uh, 256 bits and use two, PR, two PRFs, so uh, size-preserving PRFs, which we'll call PRF0 and PRF1, and get S0, which will be the image of S using the first one, and S1, which will be the Im image of S using the second one. Repeat the same thing to get the next layer of seeds, and again, 
until he has more seeds than uh, needed, which will be at least three times alpha times n seeds. From this, he can use a PRG on each seed to get the corresponding randomnesses. Let's say he needs only eight randomnesses. And then, on the second step, the verifier will send a challenge to the prover asking to reveal some of those randomnesses. Let's say he needs to reveal randomness one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight then you can simply go back up this tree and see which nodes will be necessary to reveal these randomnesses. So here, if we, we see that, for example, if he sends this seed to the verifier, the verifier can apply PRF0 and PRF1 to the seed and recover then using the PRG R1 and R2. Same thing, he needs to send this node, this node, and this node. So only three nodes to be able to reveal all those seven seeds. On average, computations show that n times log alpha nodes will be sufficient. So the prover will only need to send n times log alpha seeds to be able to reconstruct the randomness uh, needed to, 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 to be able to reconstruct the randomness that he must reveal. So now we finally have reached overhead big O of log alpha. So another improvement that can be made on this uh, protocol is to consider polynomial integer vector one-way functions. So we changed the setting that we had before a little. Instead of using z to the r, we use a ring to the power of r, the ring being uh, usually z of x divided by x to the n plus one. It can be other rings, but that's the most common one. And now we have an additional property for uh, our one-way function, is that it's uh, linear for a product with a, a polynomial, where here c times x means that we multiply every coefficient of x by uh, the polynomial c, and uh, this uh, c goes, goes out of the f uh, when applied. So still the same requirement that it is hard to inverse for small x, and why do we consider this? Because virtually all efficient lattice uh, constructions are uh, over polynomial rings. S and since we want efficient uh, zero knowledge, this is uh, an important setting. And now the challenge that used to be zero one can be taken to be a monomial, which means that instead of having only two possibilities for the challenge, we have uh, two n plus one possibilities for this challenge. And um, we can do uh, the exact same protocol, but using these challenges, we'll uh, only need n greater than 4k squared over log square alpha times n uh, equations to be amortized over. I will not give the proof of soundness for this uh, setting because it is uh, quite a bit more involved and I would not have had time. So in conclusion, the work of uh, Kramer et al construct an uh, amortized zero knowledge proof of knowledge for uh, integer vector one way function with constant overhead and linear slack. Uh, this was a huge improvement uh, upon pre prior works, but the amortization is really large. The number of uh, vectors needed for amortization was quite large. We reduced this uh, number to 4k squared divided by log square alpha for any parameter alpha. And uh, we can even further reduce this uh, number of equation to 4k squared divided by log square uh, alpha n in the case of polynomial invertible one-way functions, where uh, I will not go into, into details here, but the zero-knowledge proof is somewhat weaker in this, uh, in this context. So to give you some numbers, uh, the original work needed around 70,000 equations for uh, amortization to kick in. If we use bin uh, binary challenges, we see that only a few thousand of equations are enough. And if we use uh, monomial challenges, even a few hundreds of equations are enough, which will be uh, much more uh, feasible in practical uh, situations. On the other end, the overhead, the somewhat more um, efficient implementation of the work of Kramer et al. give a proof size per uh, secret of 8.8 .8 kilobytes. 
and we see that uh, with uh, our construction, we reach at most 10.3 kilobytes per secret, which is a 15% incre increase in uh, size, which is totally reasonable. So thank you for your attention.